Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A email number seven, I believe. I'm going to keep doing these until I run out of emails, which will probably be never. So if you guys want to email me, and I will possibly read it on air, the email address is msargent23 at comcast.net. So msargent23 at comcast.net. Let's just get right to it. First email, how GPS really works. Mark, I love your work. How GPS really works explained. All right, he gets right to it. I became an amateur radio operator when I was about nine years old in 1980. Back then, I regularly communicated very, very far away on the earth using very low wattages and a very small antenna by using tropo scatter. Located in Albany, New York, I would regularly talk to people in Australia, London, Russia. I have QSL cards to prove this, but all amateur radio operators know this to be the case. The link below shows that Russia and the United States were successfully working on so-called tropo scatter technology through the 50s. They then moved to satellite-based systems. It is funny to see the scientists still admit they don't fully understand how the technology works as the transmissions are obviously bouncing off the firmament. And then he sends a link. It's to www.us. Uh, I'm sorry, AUSairpower.net, uh, and then it says APA Tropo Scatter Systems.html. So if you guys want to look that up, uh, you will see the Tropo Scatter Systems 1.7 to 2.3 gigahertz and 4 to 4.5 gigahertz use extraordinarily similar frequencies as the GPS 1.2 to 1.57. And satellite radio, which is 2.3, and television, 4 to 8 gigahertz frequencies. In fact, satellite communication is considered to be between 1 to 40, 40 gigahertz for various commercial and military purposes. Radio frequencies range from 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz, up until the light range. So the odds of this similar frequency utilization can hardly be considered coincidence. So there you go, military solved. The military, DOD, just has a very much ground-based tropo scatter system set up around the world to transmit around the Earth from known points. The receivers pick up the ground-based transmitters and calculate where you are located from the ground-based transmitters. Frankly, replacing ground-based transmitters from satellite-based transmitters makes the technology even easier to explain. Same technology is used for satellite radio and television. Same deal for satellite phones. I'll try and make a video on this. Thanks again for all your work, explanation points. Mike. Thanks, Mike. That's awesome. That's really, really great. So uh, looking forward. Hope, hopefully you do make a video. Uh, this one is from Billy Myers, which is really weird because my brother-in-law's name is actually Mark Myers, and his nickname is Billy. So he does go by Billy Myers, although it's spelled a little differently. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Uh, hey, Mark, I saw your YouTube video on the flatter theory. I'm 60 years old, and it was a real mind blower because just like everyone else, I went through life from childhood till I saw your video that the earth was round like a sphere. I never even gave it a second thought. And in my lifetime, I've read the Bible front to back about maybe six times, and I never noticed that there are actually all caps, scriptures that say the earth is in fact flat. You don't have to read the whole Bible. You can look it up online and find the scriptures. I called your number hoping to catch you for a few minutes. I'm sure you're a busy man. If you ever get a chance, please call me. My name is Billy Myers. And then he gives his phone number. Thanks, Billy. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I do have to screen pretty much all the phone calls at this point because I get so many and uh, in you know my fault for putting my phone number on the on the very first videos I made and the ones that were copied and mirrored and I put my email out there a lot but I but I meant to and my real name because uh, you know when I put this when I started this thing and I didn't invent flat earth when I when I clarified the the flat earth message I honestly thought I was missing something I thought that maybe I, I was leaving something out so that's why I put it out there so you know what shut me up, put me, you know, throw, throw all my theories away and see if you can discount everything that I'm saying. And really thought that somebody smarter than me would, uh, I'm sorry, more intelligent than me, would come back and, and stop this thing in the ground. And the exact opposite happened. And here we are 90 interviews later and a whole bunch, I mean, what am I, am I pushing 400 videos at this point? Uh, anyway, thanks really, Billy. Awesome. Uh, this next one is from Milkman. Milkman. Great. First off, your videos are top-notch. 
I started watching them and I'm on my second go round, letting everything sink in. It's funny and I don't think people think about it until they run into material like yours and then you realize, wow, I've been duped. Every morning when I walk out to my car, now I laugh because I don't feel the wind moving by me at a thousand miles an hour. And then I think to myself, how ridiculous was it for me to believe what they said when my senses are telling me something completely different? Anyway, I remembered watching a TV show when I was a kid, Salvage One with Andy Griffith. And I'll talk about this in a second. I don't remember too much other than he was a junkyard dealer that made a spaceship to go to the moon and salvage Apollo stuff left behind. I did not hear mention of this when discussing TV shows that talk about lunar exploration. How long have you been researching this? I have been researching this since uh, summer of 2014 and the Flat Earth Clues were done February of last year. So uh, if you start from when the clues came out, a year and a half, a little more. And as far as that show, Salvage One, yeah, it's really weird. You know, you can watch it on YouTube, download it, whatever. And it's a terrible 70s uh, you know, television show with the whole premise was that uh, the, the anything on Apollo was considered junk after a certain number of years. And so a junkyard dealer is like, well, I should be able to build our own rocket. So he hires some guys, some ex-NASA guys or whatever. And they build a rocket and they go to moon, the moon to salvage this stuff. It's like, whoa, that is so bizarre. And I, I can see why they don't really replay this thing. Well, one, it's a terrible show. But two, it don't give people ideas. I mean, back, of course, the United States military would confiscate anything you ever brought back if you actually went to the moon, which you can't go anyway. But it's a fascinating, fascinating take on it and ridiculous, but really thought provoking, especially if you're in the flat earth. So thank you, thank you for mentioning Salvage One with Andy Griffith. Uh, let's see here. Milkman also writes. Oh, wait, no, that was just the thing. The Milkman, are you? Are, yeah, he, his first video. And I get this every once in a while. People will email my, my uh, address and say, are you the guy with the Flat Earth video? It's like, are you that guy? I also get texts along those lines. And uh, but email me if you can, and I say yes, absolutely. Somebody emails me, from, and I haven't, I don't recognize the email. Yeah, I will write back and say, yeah, totally me, because they want to make sure I'm real. The same thing with the phone number. A lot of people call. I, I will have repeated phone calls from the same number because they can't believe it's actually a voicemail, and they can actually leave a voicemail. Uh, it's absolutely a real number. As a matter of fact, both numbers go to the same voicemail right now. Uh, the three zero three four nine four six six three one, which is my personal number. That gets routed to the Strange World show number, which is 720-897-6111. And uh, that goes through Skype and then just gets picked up. So thank God for technology. Uh, let's see, Flat Earth. Uh, this is from Chris. Uh, hi, my name is Chris and I'm from Scotland. I've been told I'm not going to, I shouldn't do accents, so I will not do a Scottish accent, even though I so want to. I have watched a lot of stuff on Flat Earth and it started with your Flat Earth clues. I was enjoying Strange World number 71 and hearing about the aviation family and understand that they used their experience to break away from the globe. I, however, found it easy to break away from the globe as most, uh, most, most a lot of stuff. Remember, just so you know, when I read this stuff, I'm reading it as is. I don't run it through a grammar check or a spell check or anything. So if I flub up, it's most likely because it's the way you typed it. As most a lot of stuff, I was told just not, not add up. I am also a one for seeing is believing. The talk of programming kids as young as five in primary schools is spot on. In my primary school, not only did we have a globe, but we had a rocket ship that was in a play area. So there is that as well as the globe. My questions to you are this. I was listening to someone called Corey or Cody Good. He was talking about secret bases on the moon and spaceships flying about. And I was just wondering, what goes through your head when you hear people talking about this stuff when you firmly believe in flat earth? Do other conspiracy theories trouble you? Uh, let me answer that right off the bat. Very few conspiracies actually conflict, in my opinion, with flat earth. Uh, hollow earth doesn't conflict. Uh, aliens don't uh, conflict. Well, aliens get changed. A lot of, the, a lot of the, the conspiracies have to be modified somewhat, like any spaceships you see flying around up there. I don't think they're from other planets. I don't think they're from Mars and Venus and Jupiter and wherever else you want to take uh, talk about. I think they are from uh, very, very close. Either they are just outside this place in, a, you know, based on another continent that's outside of this dome or they're trapped in here with us. One of the two. But they're definitely uh, under some sort of protocol. And that is sort of a hands-off prime directive 
protocol where they're not allowed to land in Main Street anywhere. You know, get out, shake hands, take a few pictures, a few selfies, sign autographs, and leave because there would be a, a massive upheaval. Now, not as much as it used to be, but it'd still be a major, major, major event. But if you did it 100 years ago, it'd be turned into a religion. And if it was a couple hundred years ago, a really big religion, anyone has any doubts, take a look at the second Star Trek movie. Not the third one, but the second one, where they were trying to get off, of, they were trying to stop this volcano from blowing up the planet or whatever. And the ship was seen by the natives, and the natives just threw away, literally threw away their old religion and created a new one based on the ship. And that's, yeah, that's what would happen in a lot of cases. So do most conspiracies do not bother me, uh, other conspiracies, because I think they, they dovetail in quite nicely to Flat Earth. Uh, the only two which really, really don't have any... Uh, um, I hold any weight anymore one would be uh kent hoagland's theories about bases on the moon and bases on venus and bases on mars and all the you know people living on planets because there are no planets to live on so no nothing like that now is there somebody living on the moon well not the way we know it if the moon is much 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 smaller then yeah the moon could be you know that's that's not a moon that's a spaceship or you know a space station you know like star wars could be something like that but Eh, I mean, major populations doubt it. I mean, it's 30 miles. I mean, you know, Los Angeles is over 10 million people and they're living in a fairly small section of land by comparison, but eh, it doesn't really matter. So that doesn't, I also don't believe that Elvis didn't die. Uh, there's some conspiracies I don't care as much about. Let me, in fact, let me rephrase that. Every other conspiracy, I think it's knocked down a peg. Every single one, because Flat Earth is at the top of the heap right now nothing is bigger than that because it's the whole world every other conspiracy you want to talk about bigfoot and the loch ness monster and, and uh, jfk and pearl harbor and world trade center and sandy hook and boston bombing all that stuff yeah i believe in those conspiracies but i do not um uh they don't hold a candle to flat earth so anyway so like you said here you fall he follows this with also let's just say it it was a globe we live on but way bigger than we have been told what would that have any effect on not seeing seeing any curvature oh you mean like um if the world was massive 100 times bigger than it is if if our world is just a flat part on a much bigger bigger world yeah i mean that's just splitting hairs a whole bunch of different versions like you know are we a snow globe on the desk of some scientist isn't you know and then what's his world look like is his world a globe you got to remember why you keep thinking about the globe it could be a square it could be just a flat endless plane you don't know the only reason you keep everyone keeps going back to the globe is because of the reinforcement policies you know we are told over and over and over and over again that everything is a sphere all the planets are a sphere all the other solar systems are filled with spheres we're a sphere we're doing massive sphere circles everything's spinning everything's moving but it's all in sphere uh, spear references so uh that's why that's why people keep thinking about that it's like well couldn't we big couldn't we be a, a, on a much much bigger earth it's like yeah you could but why you gotta ask yourself why do you keep thinking about spheres it's because you were told this since you were a child oh let's see here is there any way that could work keep up the good work mucker mucker is that a british thing i don't know what mucker means somebody let me know what that is regards from edinburgh chris doolin not to be confused with, um, oh crap, I can't remember, uh, the, the guy, Scotty from Star Trek, Doolin is his last name though, and I can't remember his first name, I'm not going to look it up right now. Derek writes, Freemason or not, you saved me, Mark. Wow, that's good. I've been contemplating contacting you for quite some time now, ever since about Febu February, the time frame of that notorious rap battle, I've been using the resources you've made available to further re-educate myself, and I'll admit, it's been one heck of a ride. I must be honest, my past is riddled with its own instances of wickedness, both consciously and subconsciously committed. You have forever changed that, though. Your now famous clues video, Through the Door Wide Open, as if, you know, I think I read this. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I read this one. Sorry, guys. I'm not editing that out. Uh, Flat Earth, J next video, or next thing. Flat Earth, hey, Mark, just a quick question if you would be so kind as to answer. I have watched several of your videos, including your clues videos, and I find it all very fascinating. It's one way to educate myself without spending money and time on the road to attend college. I have one year of college under my belt, but stopped 
to raise a family. Now I'm a grandma. All right. Maybe you have addressed this before and I just haven't come across it. Could you explain earthquakes and how they occur on a flat earth? I've only heard the explanation as taught in school. Thank you so much in advance for your answer. Just a mom and grandma. She didn't give her name. Uh, well, mom and grandma. Uh, when it comes to plate tectonics, they're all part of the natural system. Again, I think they still work much, much better. And that is the tectonics still exist. They can still exist on a flat circular system. It's just that they're not bent around a globe. So just take the plate tectonics system they explain to you now, how things rub together and magma comes up in between them every once in a while. The magma system is still down there and the plate tectonic system is still down there. All I'm saying is that they're completely artificial. And I know I took crap for my Flat Earth Clue 6, which said that the, the magma system was artificial. And I tried to explain, I go, look, we can create magma on a small scale now. Like we can do anything now. We can play, create a planetarium now. We can create a, a giant terrarium now if we wanted to. If we wanted to build a Truman Show, which is why the movie worked so well, all it is is money and resources. We have the tech to do it for the most part. Can we fool somebody? Yes, because as mentioned in the Truman Show, we believe the world that is presented to us. So when it comes to plate tectonics and mag the magma system, and everything is, you know, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll steal from science here. Tecton the plates move together. They rub against each other and things happen. Uh, do they create mountain ranges? Eh, maybe. Maybe. Or is it that tree thing? Don't know. Next email. Paul says, live show. Where do I go to listen to you live? I have only heard you on recorded YouTube videos. Thanks, Paul. Uh, well, Paul, if you're listening to this now and you haven't figured this out already, I am on Truth Frequency Radio. You can go to truthfrequencyradio.com. And the show is called Strange World, and this week I think is 73 or 74. I should probably look that up while well, I've got you. 74 is this week. And uh, currently it is on Tuesday nights, although that is subject to change. Tuesday nights, seven, starting at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. So there you go. Oh, yeah, and if you're listening to this, uh, the next one coming up, uh, which will date stamp it for you, is going to be coming up next week, which will be the second week of October. And that one will be someone from the uh, Coast Guard Merchant Marine side of things. The Merchant Marine, I believe, is like the National Guard version of the Coast Guard. And he's going to talk about Flat Earth and how he's a believer. And he's just going to be adding to the subject matter expert list. David writes, thanks to Mark Sargent. It's awfully formal. Hi, Mark. Last weekend, I was at a South American style ceremony involving a sacred plant. During this ceremony, I received a message about the importance of thanking people who are important to me. The message was that thanking and acknowledging people is sort of like getting something out of my system. The first person that was mentioned was you for opening my mind over a year ago when I stumbled onto your Flat Earth Clues. Since then, besides researching the topic of Flat Earth, so many things became open to question and it's amazing how different the world looks to me. So thanks so much, Mark. And I always love listening to your channel. David Ross Dichter. D-E-I-T-C-H-E-R. Dichter? I don't know. Thanks, Ross. Or David. Honestly, that's great. Um, Mimi writes, I have evidence to prove your theory is correct. Hi, I was conducting an independent study of the Dead Sea Scrolls texts, particularly... Genesis chapter 1, I transcribed the original text. In doing so, I uncovered a math equation within the written text. I immediately went to the religious community online and to the experts in Hebraic language with this information. The text itself is easy to transcribe and it is clearly written. Genesis transcribes into a mathematical equation. When I approached the experts with this information, I was immediately dismissed and silenced. I then took the equation to the scientific community. I discovered this equation is the grand unification theory. I confirmed the information with the scientific community without revealing where I obtained it. But then I was asked where I found this equation. So it's then revealed that it came from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Bible, after which the scientific community dismissed it and sent me on a wild goose chase. I went on the goose chase. I am actually going to finish this email, guys, believe it or not. You're probably thinking, oh, wow, you got some, you got a live one here. doesn't really matter. I'm going to finish this. I went on the goose chase anyway. I decided it would 
do as the scientific community, I would do as the scientific community requested. I was given a list of criteria to obtain in order to validate the information and equation. I met those requirements dictated by science in order to confirm that the equation is in fact the theory of everything. Or the grand unification theory, science has been desperately trying to find out. I met a requirement. Every piece of information is easily verifiable by anyone. Science is the only community that is capable of confirming this equation. Now I am being told that they will not accept this information because I am not a physicist. If a conspiracy is what you are about, this is the biggest one you will ever come across in your lifetime. Science is refusing to confirm the equation because of where it came from, the Bible. The scientific community is now trying to shut me up. I have every piece of evidence. I have the equation. I have the proof. The equation shows every particle in existence. From what I could easily see, there are 62, not 61 as shown, or as known. I posted it in June 2016. There was an initial form of light that existed. They discovered it in August of 2016. The religious community believes it is impossible. The Bible contains anything mathematical. When I approached the authorities on Hebraic language, they dismissed me because I am not an expert. I am a nobody who uncovered information that the experts could have easily done themselves, but they failed at it. Now this information is being hidden from the public because the person who discovered everything is not an expert in either field. The fact that it was me and nobody who discovered information that has been there the entire time under their noses and they failed to see it as I did is the only reason both sides and trying to shut me up and shut me down. I can be reached at blah, blah, blah. Thanks for your time. I have no idea what this is to do. This has nothing to do with flat earth. But I read this because, and I finished it. I'm not going to edit it out because I get these emails every once in a while. People just reaching out, which is good. I don't know if this person knew anything about flat earth or anything about anything. But you know what? A couple minutes, then I'm not going to get back. So thanks. Delhi writes, flat earth model. Hello, Mark. I would first of all like to thank you so much for all the work you have done and continue to do on the flat earth and exposure of the deception. I am a homeschooling mom to my seven-year-old boy in Canada. I would be very grateful if you could advise me on where I could get a model of the FE from, if not from you. Also, any ideas on perhaps how to go about teaching this in a methodical way? Best, rega best regards, Delhi Rainer. Well, Dilly, I'm glad you're homeschooling your person or your um, your child. And as far as models go, physical models, a little tough to come by right now. The, the only guy that I knew that actually made a physical model, not a computer model, was Chris Pontius. And I actually have one of them at my, my uh, house. But he, I don't know if he's still doing it. Um, look up Chris Pontius, P-O-N-T-I-U-S, Flat Earth, and you'll see a couple, couple videos by him. He gives his address and where to go and look for it. But people have told me that it's not active anymore. So I don't know. See if you can find him. I, I haven't been able to find him recently, although I haven't been, honestly, I haven't been chatting with him in a few months. But that's your best bet as far as getting a Flat Earth model. If somebody else wants to make a model based off the computer, uh, models that have been shown, please do. I'm sure there's a market for it out there and I don't know what happened to Chris. So that's the first place that I would look as far as models go. As far as, because you're going to be homeschooling your child and I'm guessing that you're of the Christian persuasion, I would, you want to look for a, a great batch of resources right off the bat, I would go to testingtheglobe.com. And if not, you know, just go into, I, I have something in my channel uh, which is Mark K. Sargent, called the Flat Earth Shortlist, which is a, a list of, you know, of various Flat Earth videos that I think are, are fairly concise. You know, they range in all durations and uh, perspectives, and I think they, they do a nice job of giving a great cross-section of what the community is about. So check that out when you get a chance. And I, I have tried to update it on a, on a regular basis, and that reminds me I should probably update it today and make sure you know there aren't any dead links in there, because that does happen from time to time. Uh, this one's called Earth to Moon. Mark never thought I would believe the world was flat, but I made the mistake of trying to debunk that belief. And lo and behold, so now that my paradigm has shifted again in my life, I just want to say thank you. Your information and research has been very helpful. Also, it might interest you to know that I worked on several episodes from Earth to the Moon and was one of the very few people who got to see the moonscape set. Wow, awesome. That's great. He's talking about uh, Earth's and Moon, the Tom Hanks miniseries, if I'm not mistaken. If you look for my name in IMDb, you won't find it, but you will find it in the actual credits of the movie. I was in charge of the dailies and I worked a horrible graveyard shift. I can't recall exactly what I had to, 
uh, why I had to go to the set, but I do remember that I had to take some items to a producer. I do recall it was a very closed set and it was the second largest freestanding wooden structure on earth. Wow. Uh, I think it was in Orange County. Fun, funny thing, and I remember how peculiar it struck me even back then that there were consultants from NASA on set. Also, the actual top half of the real lunar module was used to add to authenticity of it all. I have had questions about NASA since that experience, and I am a longtime conspiracy believer. The Flat Earth seems to be the link holding many parts together. I am not one to reach out like this, but I felt compelled to since you did make mention of the movie in one of your proofs. I still have my script bag and jacket from the movie after all these years. Of course, I was just a small crew member, so minor canvas and not leather like Mr. Hanks and the big shots, but I still got them. I was very fortunate in Hollywood, and I thank God that I made it out of there alive. Last time I ventured back there, I ended up stuck for days because my flight home was supposed to be at 10 a.m. on 9-11-2001. So I haven't gone back. Thanks for your time. Kind regards. Harold Lee. Honest. That's great. That's the first time I actually read that email. Uh, next email. Good movie. M. Sargent, just wanted to say nice job on your movie. They are hiding God with the greatest lie ever. I'm not going to explain. If you don't already know what that is, just look it up. I, I'm not going to explain that every single time that somebody mentions that because I get a lot of emails about that. First off, you got to hear this weird coincidence. I went to Barnes & Noble this past Saturday to pick up a King James Bible. And as the store employee and I started walking from the customer service counter to the Bible section, the lady says, do you want to take the long route or the straight route? I said, what do you mean? She says, well, we can zigzag all the way there or we can just take a straight route. I broke the awkward silence by stating that I now believe in God and need a Bible to read so I can figure out what the hell is going on in this reality. Then on Sunday, I searched YouTube for the keyword phrase, Hillary Black Eyes. That's an interesting search. And somehow stumbled across your video. Really? Hillary Black Eyes and, and my video was recommended to you? It's weird because I've never used, oh, because eyes. I've used eyes in, uh, in uh, some of the titles of my videos. And somehow stumbled across your video. After watching the part where planes going from South Africa to Australia are zigzagging, I realized the lady at the store had said something similar. I know it was just a weird coincidence and probably had no significance. But holy cow, man, as a conspiracy theorist, it really messed with my head. So... I got a million questions for you, but just to start off, I didn't understand your point when you stated that no cameras in low Earth orbit actually pan 180 to 360 degrees because there would be nothing to see. You used the analogy of a movie set and stated that there is no fourth wall. If a camera in space panned to the fourth wall, wouldn't that show the firmament? Ah, I see. Okay. You're lost because you're 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 still you're still believing that they're in space. What I'm saying is that the if these all the astronauts are on some sort of sound sound stage, then there is no fourth wall. That's it's the rule of sound stages. There's only three walls, and the camera is the fourth wall. So you're you, you haven't let go of space yet. There's nobody up there. So no, it's not a dumb question. You're just still believing that there's that they're astronauts up there and that they're hiding the firmament, but they're taking pictures of everything else. No, no, they wouldn't take that chance. There's, there's nobody up there. Never has been. Uh, sorry if it sounds like a dumb question. I am new to this conspiracy and you are the first to open my eyes. I am in the process of downloading about 80 videos on the Flat Earth Conspiracy from YouTube right now, which means the guy has not probably slept since this email was written. Thanks for showing me the truth. I am still not 100% convinced, but I have a feeling that I will be in a few months after doing a lot of research. God bless, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Uh, let's see. This one's called Otrak Vyakislav, Russian Child Prophet and the Flat Earth. All right. Sounds interesting. Hi, in case you missed it, the story of Otrok, I'm not going to say his last name, we'll just call him Otrok, is something of a curiosity, and I'll spell it for you, V-Y-A-C-H-E-S-L-A-V. So that way you don't write me and ask me, what's the last name of that funny Russian kid? Is something of a curiosity in regards to the Flat Earth. He was born in Russia in 1982 and died just before his 11th birthday in 1993. The boy made many apocalyptic predictions about coming events in the world, but also of interest is his rejection of the idea that the Earth is a globe. 
In this video, his mother describes some of her talks with him on this subject. The first 12 minutes give some biographical details, and thereafter we hear the mother recall the boy's talks on the subject. It's interesting that he was speaking on this topic so many years ago. Mm, yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> Uh, and then there's a link to the YouTube thing. I'm sure you guys probably could look it up. Some more videos in his life and predictions can be found here. And then the guy signs it. That's it. So he goes, look this guy up. And how this weird prophetic kid who died at age 11 was talking about Flat Earth. Cool. Oh, and thanks to the guy who sent this email. It comes from Y.S. Mayes Vera. M-A-Y-E-S-V-A-R-A. So thanks very much. Uh, this one comes in. The title is WTF. Hi there, Mark. First of all, please do not make my email account public. All right, I will not make, I will not read your email account number. I'm almost 30 years old and I have been a flat earther almost my whole life. Ever since I was told in the first grade that earth was a globe, I questioned it. I think in another way uh, as opposed to the other people because it made no sense. I was scared to be called a nut job and that is why I never said anything about it. Thanks to, mostly, you and Jaronism, I started going public about Flat Earth in the past several months. I have lost quite a few friends, but I do not care as long as the truth comes out. Now, that truth has revealed some other truths as well. Firstly, now I know for sure that there is a God. Quite a revelation, right? There are a lot of things that I have been thinking of, but the most important, besides God being real, is why God hates us. No, I don't think God hates you. I will not go into much further detail that piece you have to figure out on your own. But the question remains. God did not have to do anything. He didn't. He did in order to make us his bellowed, bellowed ones. But he made us mortal, sinful, be less of persons as opposed to women. Women rank higher if you think about it, right? Oh, yes, I do. So he made us his bitches. <laughs> There was no need for a devil or anything else. If he truly loved us, he would have given us a perfect world. Ooh, boy, I got to stop, stop him there before I finish this. Uh, steal from the Matrix, and that is, did you know the first Matrix was designed to be a perfect world where none suffered and everyone was happy? It was a disaster. Uh, no one would accept your programming. It was, you know, like a, your a dream your prim prim primitive cerebrum kept trying to wake up from that's straight from the matrix by the way uh, which is you can't create a perfect world because no one will believe it the perfection and a paradise you need you need in a world like this you have to have both you, there is no light without shadow there is no uh hot without cold and sour without sweet you have per for true perspective you have to have both i'm just saying that anyway continue on with this email uh, I know that you do not enter the world of religion in your videos. Well, that's not exactly true. But please do address this subject because I think that it is too important. If the world is truly flat and if God is, is as a liar, where do we stand in that case? Signed, Nikola Tesla. No, he, he says, just kidding. Nikola M. from Serbia. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I do believe that this, this place is perfect in its own way. It's a test. It's a classroom. It is a ride. It is a sound stage. It is a terrarium. It is a planetarium. It is all these things combined, combined perfectly, uh, and to see what we would do when left to our own devices. Uh, subject, next email is called mistake. Uh, dear Mark, you have done yourself a disservice as the most articulate promoter of Flat Earth. Your September 24th compilation presentation departs from your usual evidentiary standard in this truncated form. New initiates that have a genuine wish to find out what this flat stuff is all about are hit with for them conjecture and speculation. Please put on a newbie's hat and listen to your presentation as someone totally unfamiliar with this revolutionary concept. Go with the facts at the start and you can cut loose a bit at the end. Thank you for what you have done. I really admire the measured delivery and understandable diction you bring to this subject your best wishes lend morning i don't remember what i did on the 24th len if you're listening to this will you please write me another email and see i have to look this up september 24th what did i create on september 24th i have to look that up now i didn't think it was that bad and you're the only one to write about it but anyway we'll take a look uh this one's called response to under the dome and relevant video and article to check out 
long title. Greetings from California, Mark. I watched Under the Dome several months ago, and it changed my fundamental... That's the other one, by the way, Under the Dome. Uh, not the television show, Under the Dome, full documentary, which is basically Flat Earth Clues in a, in a different wrapper made by somebody else. Uh, and it changed my fundamental perspective on almost everything. I have since referred several people to it, but only one of them sat through the full two hours like I did. He sought me out and was beside himself so much that he couldn't find the words to express his response to it. Every time I run into him, his face brightens up significantly as he shakes a finger at me and grins. As for the other people I gave the link to, sadly, it seems as though many folks are so caught up in a ridiculous, mindless crap that is on television and elsewhere these days that they don't dedicate the time to watching something educational. I myself look for the learning and there aren't enough hours in the day, especially since the advent of the internet. I'm an old timer and remember when my father brought home our first color television. So I hold a healthy appreciation, how sorry, healthy appreciation for the amazing technology we have availed to us today. And I have always retained a bit of a child within me it keeps me enthusiastic, fun-loving, sprightly, you don't hear that much, and delighted with things. And I will never lose the wonder I feel just observing the world around me, a world that is now flat. I must say that I particularly enjoyed your narration and tonality as you took us through Under the Dome. That part where you say, I know, I know, made me giggle the second and third time I watched it. I checked out the website of Rob Skiba, testingtheglobe.com, after I listened to you and he on another video, and he had a plethora of info on there about the Book of Enoch. I discovered passages in Enoch that I did not see in Rob's Enoch information that I wanted to share with him. However, on his contact page, I found no email address where I could send him the info I found. His contact page contains a long explanation of why he doesn't want to receive any emails from people. He sounded really disillusioned, saying that he just, he just doesn't want to read any more emails from naysayers, my own words. I only wanted to tell him I agreed with him and wanted to share some Enoch passages that he did not speak of uh, that clearly inferring a flat earth. It's too bad. He couldn't have received my email because it's probably it probably would have cheered him up to get an email from someone who was nice and who agreed with him. So I am going to share the info with you and perhaps you could forward it to Rob if you have time. Below are the passages I found in the Book of Enoch and my own comments, uh, i.e. my note below each passage pointing out the part that implies a flat earth. All right, let's, let's go through them real quick. Section 29, chapter 106. It is not the whole sea, all its waters, and all its commotion, the work of him, the most high, of him who has sealed up all its exertions and girded it on every side with sand. My note, girded it on every side, inferring a linear shape. Chapter 18, 2, verse 2, I'm assuming verse. I surveyed the stone which supports the corners of the earth. My note, use of the word corners implies the earth has a linear shape. Chapter 33, verse 1, from thence I advanced on towards the north to the extremities of the earth. Verse 2, and there I saw a great and glorious wonder at the extremities of the whole earth. My note, and there I saw a great and glorious wonder at the extremities. You want to just emphasize that. Synonyms for extremity, uh, end, termination, verge, border, boundary. That's from Random House. Uh, let's see. Oh, and an end of an elongated or pointed structure by Houghton Mifflin. Do you reckon he saw the same thing the Russians and the United States saw that compelled them to send up missiles? Yes, I do. I, I actually do. And if people don't know what I'm talking about, they're listening to this for the first time. Look up high altitude nuclear explosions, which the United States and Russia did from 1958 till 1962. What were they firing at? Why are they just throwing nukes up into the sky for four years? Chapter 51, verse 7. Nor shall they have it in their power to secure themselves and to fly. Interesting. My note. Although this has nothing to do with the flat earth, I found the reference to men not flying intriguing. I should have included the passage just before seven, but it spoke about men not having silver, so it was referring to men not flying. Hmm, interesting. 
and he says, here's a link to a short video that I first saw on VHS and bought for 25 cents years ago. After I watched your Under the Dome documentary, I thought of this video and then found it on YouTube. Please watch it through to the end, for there you will find a message it conveys. This expert excerpt is called Afternoon Adventure from the 1993 VHS, VHS titled Beyond the Mind's Eye that featured some of the first computer-generated video shorts. Hmm. So Beyond the Mind's Eye, 1993. This video is really a trip and will be of special significance to you. So please watch it through the end. I will try, I swear. Uh, one more thing, I encountered quite by accident an article in The Guardian yesterday about an extraordinary government project that I want to bring to your attention in the event you haven't yet seen it. It's about a government endeavor from 1959 called Project Iceworm. I'm telling you, Mark, as I read it, I couldn't help but think that it perhaps has something to do with what the government saw in or at Antarctica a couple of years before this project commenced. According to your Dome documentary, I saw something that really freaked them out in Antarctica around 1957. This Project Iceworm began in 1959. The article refers it refers to it as a top secret U.S. military project involving burying some nuclear waste beneath the Greenland ice cap as well as building a city under the ice. It said its personnel were to test Arctic construction methods and carry out research. That's kind of vague. They built a three kilometer network of tunnels eight meters beneath the ice that housed laboratories, a shop, a hospital, a cinema, a chapel, and accommodation for 200 soldiers. But then further down, the article says quite the contrary. In reality, the camp served as cover for something altogether different, a project so immense and so secret that not even the Danish government was informed of its existence. Then amazingly, the article segues into this. Eventually, the engineers realized ice worm would not work. The constantly moving ice was too unstable and would have deformed and perhaps even collapsed the tunnels. Yeah, right, I'm not buying that. But maybe I'm not the best one to evaluate the veracity of the last statement. After all, I am biased since I learned about the big lie behind all the smaller lies they fed us. Anyway, I can't shake the feeling that Project Iceworm relates to Antarctica at some level. Uh, like maybe they were experimenting with deep ice stuff in Greenland so they could go adulterate Antarctica as well. You know how they do that. Uh, well, I want to get off want to want to get this off to you before the dreaded October 1st when Obama is handing off control of the internet to the United Nations system. Well, it's October 7th now and we're still here. Uh, it has been said that we may be subject to extraordinary censorship if China has a hand in controlling it. That Obama would take such an action is unfathomable to me. It's one more sign of the trying times in which we exist. People like you and me are blessed, Mark, because we tell the truth. It's a simple equation. I don't know any other way to be. I keep recalling that part in Dome where you talk about humans asking questions about the Dome, who built it and why. After I watched Under the Dome again this morning, I scrolled down through the videos on the right side of the page and every one was a video about Flat Earth. And I noticed that every video bore a title that asked a question. Those pesky humans, give them an inch and they'll take a mile. It occurred to me that it's not beyond the realm of possibility that the reason why the New World Order people are moving forward with more of a quickness recently is because of just that. The humans are asking too many questions about the Flat Earth, questions that they don't want to answer. Whatever it is they are hiding sure must be stupendous because I suspect they intend to fulfill their population reduction agenda to avoid discovery. And that's some scary stuff right there. They are of such substandard moral character that they would rather take someone out instead of telling the truth. That's so awful. I've always been the type of person who faces an obstacle by saying, how can I get this done? Rather than the dreaded, I can't do this. But I'll be damned if I can figure out a way out of this one. Praying is the only way to go. I feel a certain kindred spirit with you, Mark, so write back if you are so inclined to let me know your take on the article as well as the video I sent you. Take care of yourself and keep up the great work. I am forever grateful for you sharing your information and knowledge with us all on the internet. Just now in closing, words written by Thomas Paine and the American Crisis come to my mind and we can apply them directly to you and your flat earth endeavor. You brought things and men to light, which might otherwise have lain forever undiscovered. Indeed you did, Mark. Sincerely, Sandra Pennell, San Jose, California. Thank you, Sandra. I'm not going to read her phone number and email address, but thank you, thank you very, very much. It was a well-written letter. Uh, we got to, I think we can finish up the rest of these. 
Joseph Lynch, episode 61 in Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. This is Joseph from Ames, Iowa. Just was listening to episode 61, basically going back through a lot of the old TFR shows. That's Truth Frequency, Truth Frequency Radio, by the way, that I haven't heard all the way through or listened to yet. It's crazy how funny I found out about all this. I'm a huge fan of B.O.B. and mostly because of his most recent elements, mixtapes now on DAP, DAT, PIF. But obviously, that's not how I found out about him. But after the whole Twitter disclosure he made in early 2016 about Flat Earth, it got my gears turning. Of course, I went to YouTube and ran across your Flat Earth clues, which are amazing. I suppose I have I have him to thank a lot for steering me to this newfound hope. Side note, if I'm ever trying to introduce someone to the Flat Earth concept, I always go to your Flat Earth Clues videos first. You have the best presentation and tact I've ever seen for the delivery of this content. Not sure what else you, to say. You rock. Thank you so much. And please, all caps, keep doing your thing. Another note, I just ran into these vids after looking into this for only nine months now, but funny to me how they never pop up on a search. I found them while scrolling through my YouTube autoplay. It probably needs polishing and they are shorter videos, but I enjoyed them and thought I'd pass them along. Basically deals with the depth of the programming that's obvious to me now has been going on for some time. Just found out, just found them today and it was one of my most recent posts on Facebook. Uh, and then a link. Here we go. Let's take a trip back in history. Uh, part one of four. You want to see how deep the programming goes and so on and so on and so on. Uh, in closing, thank you again for everything you do. You started an actual new hope. 1977 for me and for that I am grateful. Hmm. Anyways, the original reason for sending this email was to say hi and ask for a copy of your survival guide since I'm planning on building a go bag. LOL. You know uh, with this amazing election coming up uh, and all I thought it might be the end of humanity, so I figured I might as well get my ducks in a row and be prepared. You're a good guy with a good heart, and these are the type of people I keep in my circle. Thank you so much, Joseph Julius Lynch from Ames, Iowa. And Joseph, uh, if I hadn't sent you, if you're listening to this and I haven't sent you the survival manual, which is free, it's only a couple of megs, it's called Empty Shelves, which I wrote some years ago for everybody, just in case. Uh, if, if I haven't given it to you, send me an email and say, send me the, the guide again. And anyone else is listening, if you want a free um, guide, by all means, shoot me a thing and I'll an email you. All you have to do is put in the subject line, want your survival guide or survival guide or whatever, and I'll shoot it off to you. It's pretty small. All right, let's see here. Question for t or two about the Flat Earth. Hello, my name is William Staley, and I've been researching the Flat Earth topic for about two months, and I'm about 99% convinced that we are not on a globe. Seems to me that there is more evidence of a flat plane than a globe. Well, me too. I totally agree. I have even come up with some math of my own that debunks space travel pretty much, that debunks our trip to the moon for sure. The argument I speak of works out in my mind, even though I haven't seen it and argued anywhere else. But maybe I will run that by you later. What I was wanting to ask you right now is, do you have an explanation for the midnight sun in the Antarctic? Uh, yeah, I do, but there's better guys than me out there that are making it. Uh, take a look at um, David Weiss, Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, which is D-I-T-R-H, or Zeteticism.com with Jeffrey Grupp. That, that would totally help you out there. I totally understand uh, is in the north, but I can't figure out in the south unless the video from the South Pole is faked. I've seen other theories about the way light bends in the firmament, and there is another sun, but these don't work too well in my mind. I've seen one video where the guy is supposedly filming the sun from a point in Antarctica, and the sun swings towards him and then swings away, but it never goes over or around him. Uh, it is just what I would expect from the flat earth model, but it is the only single video I can find like that. And there are tons of videos showing the sun making the full circle. Really, are there? Find me one. Uh, David Weiss can't find one. Who knows? Maybe they are all fakes. Yep, there you go. Or all edited. I don't know how many people are in on the fakes, but yeah. I also read a report that someone wrote that it never stays daylight past 7.30 p.m. all year in southern Australia. So someone is lying for sure. Anyway, I was just wondering what insight you had into this matter of a 24-hour sun in the south. Thanks, W. Staley. And I think we still have, I think we have time. We can finish this up. Hello, my friend. Uh, oh, veterans question regarding flat earth. Hello, my friend. I'm a 27 year old veteran of the United States Air Force. I worked during my service as a jet engine mechanic on several different aircraft. Over the last few years, I've spent some time researching numbers, a uh, number of conspiracy theories. I hate that word as a hobby and the truth I've found has literally changed my way of thinking. The flat earth theory has something I've brushed off for years until I started my own research, which was sparked from your videos. And I thank you for that. This is my question. During my military service, I was given the opportunity to work with reconnaissance aircraft that surfaced as 
at well above civilian transport aircraft. Pilots at this elevation would borrow our cameras and take photos of the Earth from far above for us. These photos would clearly show the curvature of the Earth. Can you explain this phenomenon that occurred at 80,000 feet? Yeah, it's the lens. Uh, I have any doubts. I don't know how many times we'll have to include this. Some wonderful weather balloon footage that's taken at 120,000 feet, which shows absolutely no curve at all. So if there's no curve at 120,000 feet, how can there be curve at 80,000 feet? One of those has to be deceptive. I'm guessing it's the one at 80, uh, and it's the lens type. If you already have covered this in explanation for my question, please forgive me. I'm new to this theory, and my research has just begun, which means by the time you even listen to this on the air, he'll know that he's already run into videos that show the flatter stuff. I'm sure I'm, I'm about to start researching flight patterns of commercial aircraft today. Hope to hear from you soon, my friend. Be easy. Preston. Thanks, Preston. Uh, this one's called Newcomer to the Truth. Hi, Mark. I'm an 18-year-old from Australia. Mate, I am writing you today as I stumbled upon your channel as I was listening to the past YouTube videos of John Laban. You piqued my interest when I heard you had released numerous videos in the Flat Earth. I have listened to your first video, Flat Earth Clues, Part 1, and have many more to go. The reason I am writing this is I am really interested in researching the Earth to prove or disprove the globe theory. I was, after some guidance... I was after some guidance of where I should start. There is so much information that can be viewed as irrelevant, but I ask you if you can give me an idea of the best place to begin. Kind regards, a confused young man. Actually signed that. And yeah, just just go into YouTube. That's the best place to go right now. And type in Flat Earth and look at, you know, the cream always rises to the top and look at the first, I don't know, 30, 40 videos that are in there. And after that, after you've lost a whole bunch of sleep, because some of those first 30 or 40 are pretty long, then just, just keep digging. And if you have specific questions, be ask specific questions in YouTube. You will find it. I mean, there's so many YouTube videos out there covering the flat earth that you could type in just about anything, whether it's the sun or gravity or planes or Antarctica or Admiral Byrd or just keep going on. There will be a whole bunch of, of videos made for specific questions. So be specific. MR writes, you're a beacon in the ghetto, bro. Oh boy. Maybe I'll end on this one, or pretty close. Eh, no, we won't end on this one. Uh, Mark, I just listened to uh, Interview 88 on uh, Shade 45 Radio, which is Eminem's uh, podcast. I wasn't interviewed by Eminem. I was interviewed by one of his his hosts, and it was called, uh, I called it, it was Interview 88, but it was Flat Earth Clue was Interview 88, but I called it Calls of Hate because they just came at me. Anyway, he goes, I listened to this. You are a scholar and a gentleman. Keep up the excellent work. Cheers, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Uh, how many more do we got? We got a couple. I don't think I'll read the wheels in the, wheel in the sky by Journey. Uh, a woman goes into a uh, Journey song called Wheel in the Sky. Uh, wheel in the Sky, blah, blah, blah. And so check that out if you get a chance. She keeps mentioning it over and over. But um, her, let me, I'll, I'll summarize in the last part. Uh, <clears throat> thanks to you guys are, who are exposing the greatest and deepest lie, mind-blowing. Glad you were out there talking and exposing truth. Just thought the Wheel in the Sky song by Journey was worth mentioning for fun. Thanks and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Rick writes, Sir, I'd like to thank you for your efforts and share a story with you all you'll find interesting. In the mid-1970s, I was attending Boys, Boy Scout summer camp and had a counselor whom, being a World War II veteran, Army Major felt young men should learn old school methods. He was referring to Morse code, orienteering, and semaphore. S-E-M-A-P-H-O-R-E. -E. I remember a conversation that included that he'd parachuted into Europe and had been involved in a semaphore in semaphore relayed communications over vast distances. The thing I remember most was when the conversation included line of sight versus curvature of the earth. He was evasive and insisted we do the math. He was a flat earther, but couldn't or wouldn't discuss it. I thought you'd find this interesting. Uh, and his signature says, you can't buy happiness, but you can buy a lift ticket. That's good if you're a skier. I'm not a skier, so lift ticket's not going to do anything for me. Uh, do we have one time for this last one? Yeah, we do. Sure, why not? This one's called Not Bad. All right. I'm Mark. I'm a Christian. Name is Tommy, or as I spell it, Thommy, T-H-O-M-M-Y. Last name, Oathland, O-H-L-U-N-D. Swedish 52-year-old male, married in two sons, Benjamin and Noah. Been a god lover since I was around 18. Since uh, I've just seen your Clues series, 
all parts. My previous contact with this flat earth theory has been limited to some videos on YouTube. My attention to it came from a friend who had sort of studied it for some time and told me a little about it. So I gave it some time and tried to figure out what they believe, those strange flat earth believers. Your whole approach to it seems different, very pedagogical, I've never used that word, and detailed on an easy to understand level as well as a step-by-step -step eye opening. I have been watching the clues on my television, so I haven't read any comments or checked any links yet. We'll do that on the computer soon. Thanks, God bless, and talk to you later. You know what? With that, I'll talk to you guys later as well. See ya!